Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Three, two, one, and we are back. Julia, love, love, love the topic of today's podcast today. Five ways to get your buyers in contract this week. But Coach Julie, there are no homes for sale. <laughs> oh, woe is you. Well, we'll talk about that. We know that you are up to your eyeballs in buyers. We know that there are more buyers and listings to sell them. But we also know that there are buyers out there that are highly motivated, highly qualified, who are just not in contract because you haven't found them the right house. So how do we get all around that? Let's talk about this. So today's topic, five ways to get your buyers in contract this week. Wouldn't that be great? How about if they had five buyers that they could all get in contract this week over the next five days? They could. They, they could. Follow this plan. All right. So here's some assumptions. Assumption A, you have buyers in your pipeline who are both motivated and qualified. You know that they're motivated and qualified because you've used your buyer pre-qualification scripts. And you also know which one is, ones of them have homes to sell. You know exactly what price range, neighborhoods, and criteria they're looking for. If not, get back to work and use the pre-qualification questions in the scripts. You can get them at premiercoaching.com by signing up for free. So I, don't let that stand in your way. I have to say, uh, debate me if you'd like to. Sure. But our buyer pre-qualifying script, mm -hmm. that was probably the hardest script it was for you and I to write. Yes. Because it took years, honestly. Mm -hmm. And uh, like the seller pre-qualifying script, that was pretty damn easy. Because really, at the end of the day, guys, I'll give you a little secret. All of you should know by now. There's no such thing as a buyer that has to buy. In other words, a buyer can always change their mind. A buyer can, you know, interest rates go up, interest rates go down, winds blow this way, one way, they're motivated, the other way, they're not, that kind they of thing. They just not buy. Yeah, the buyers can always stay put. They can always decide to take themselves out of the market, right? So there's no such thing as a buyer that has to buy. There are lots of examples of sellers that have to sell. That's the reason that our primary focus in our coaching program is always to help you guys learn how to be powerful listing agents because every single one of you, whether you're a new agent or a you know, veteran agent, every single one of you would rather have you know, 10 motivated sellers or 10 really have to sell sellers over even 50 buyers because you know at the end of the day, those sellers are going to sell and you're going to get paid, right? It just makes sense. So really what we're doing is we're helping you to understand that if you don't thoroughly pre-qualify your buyers and again, you're never going to find one that has to buy, but you can find some that are genuinely motivated to buy and qualified and qualified. And right now in this market, the combination of things you have to look for qualified, uh, realistic expectations, patience, frankly, mm -hmm. you got to know all these things. And that's the reason that pre-qualifying pre your buyers to the highest level is critically important. That is one of the first things that we want all of you guys to do when you join Premier Coaching. And we have made it easy for you to join Premier Coaching for free. Scroll down today's show description. It's also you know, on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, wherever. Just scroll down and click the link to join Premier Coaching. And yes, Julie and I still have our colds. And so <laughs> thank you for putting up with our slightly off-sounding voices. Nice. But hopefully you'll agree that the information is still you know, incredibly powerful to help you guys be motiv motivated to education, get you into action. The action you should all take right now, join Premier Coaching. All right, Julie. Yes. Okay. So we had to make that assumption because remember our topic is five ways to actually get your buyers in contract this week. That assumes that you have pre-qualified them. All right. Point number B, your buyers are, assumption B, your buyers are not actually in contract yet because either they keep losing in multiple bid situations or you can't find them a house that actually meets their criteria. Remember, low inventory could be that reason. In other words, we are assuming you pre-qualified them and you're not looking, you're not working with looky lose. You're working with actual buyers that if you showed them the actual house that they're qualified to buy, they absolutely do whatever it takes to buy it. We're assuming you're not working with, uh, you know, essentially low quality buyer leads. And we have done dedicated podcasts to figuring out the difference. Probably hundreds at this point. <laughs> many, many, many. Yes. Many. Okay. So assumption C, you're motivated and ready to get into action. You are tired of the hamster wheel of showings, bidding, and missing out. Those are our three assumptions. Now, five ways to get your buyers actually in contract this week. And the notes are in a uh, scroll below. You can get Julie's actual notes. She's going to go through these relatively quick. Uh, but again, 
you can just scroll down in the description and you'll see all these notes and we are not editing them. So you're going to see that we are reading what Julie wrote <laughs> um, and you guys can use this for your own information. And some of you are using this, I know, and it's fine to educate your teams. A lot of office managers and brokers are using this content for their office meetings. It's fantastic. We appreciate you helping us to improve the industry. So Julie, point number one. Point number one, how to get your buyers in contract. Now you're going to do each and every one of these points for each and every one of your actually motivated, qualified buyers. Okay, so apply all of what we're talking about to each one of them individually. Point number one, created a wanted flyer for each of your buyer clients. Wanted, your home for my pre-approved, or all cash if that's the case, highly motivated buyer clients. Describe your buyer's needs and price range as well as their desired communities. Here's an example. Wanted, your home for my all cash, very motivated buyer clients. This family is looking for a four bedroom, three bathroom home, ideally in Albany Woods. A fenced backyard is a plus. Flexible closing date, looking up to 750000 Call me today if your home is a match. Now, obviously, if it's not all cash, don't say all cash. And one of the things yeah. we give you on uh, in Premier Coaching, a sample flyer that you can use. And again, this is a concept we came up with ages ago. It's a buyer's wanted flyer. Am I stepping on one of your future points? Sellers wanted for your Sell buyers. Sellers wanted for your buyers. Well, so in other words, you're going to, I'll give an example. Matt Wilhide. Mm hmm uh, yes, Matt, I'm going to talk about you. Michigan Matt, I think. Michigan Matt, right. Mm -hmm. He had a, a, a client. I'm trying to remember the details. And the day quill was making my brain a little foggy, <laughs> but he had a client who had a sweet property to sell, but they would only, they, oh, I do remember. Uh, he had just, the couple just got married. They're an older couple. They just got married. This guy wanted to move back to the community where he grew up. And they had, a, they had, I believe, two properties to sell because they're an older couple getting married and they both had their own homes that they were going to sell. And this new house they wanted to buy in this new neighborhood, his old neighborhood, you guys get the idea. So there was nothing for sale in this particular community. And there, it basically the stuff was just, you know, it didn't come for sale very often. When it did, it was selling a lot of times off market. So he knew what his buyers were looking for. He then went and identified the properties that he knew would be a good match for them. And he went out and door knocked. And he has had a legit, ready to go, motivated, you know, 100%, you know, very motivated buyer. He went and door knocked and guess what he found? I think if I remember correctly, he only knocked on three or four doors. He found a seller that wanted to sell the house. So that seller then agreed, I believe it was the same day or the next day. To, if she was thinking about, I think she was thinking about Fizboing. Hopefully I'm not mixing up, Matt, if I'm mixing up what you told me last week, it's the day quill. Okay. There might be Two instances like this is what I'm saying, listeners. Anyway, so the seller agreed to sell the house to these folks. The seller then went off and was going to buy another house from Matt. So let's add up the transaction that Matt's going to get. Are you counting, listeners? All right, we're going to assume he's going to list both of the houses of the people uh, you know they're moving from. And then let's assume he doesn't double end those. Let's just assume he just lists them and they sell co-op. Mm -hmm. he's, he's now double ending the house that he found for them. That from door knocking. So that's four deals. And that's four deals. And then he's going to sell them, the, the seller of that house, another house. There's five deals. At least. At least. In his marketplace, I'm guessing it's Michigan, so it's not a super high sale price. It's probably at least forty dollars or $50,000 worth of uh, referral fee revenue that he just generated from door knocking. Because he was proactive. Because he was proactive. Yes. And Matt is, Matt is like... He's, he's quickly becoming one of my most proactive agents ever. And he's in a market where there's not a lot of listings for sale, but he's being situationally aware. He's frankly, he's completely understanding that there's always people that want to buy mm -hmm. and sell. You walk out your front door, you're tripping over humans. All of them want to buy or sell real estate. He is now accepting that as the, as the reality of it. He's no longer seeing lead as, leads is hard to find. He's now seeing there's an abundance of leads everywhere he looks. He just has to essentially be the person that's looking. And guess what he discovers? There's opportunities everywhere, like what I just described. Make your own inventory, guys. That's right. And take that example. That was just one buyer couple, one example, okay? And one example of him being that proactive that led to potentially five transactions. I'm sure Matt has not just them that he's working with and he's going to lather, rinse, repeat. So that sounds a lot like point number two. Use your wanted flyer that we just talked about to door knock their desired neighborhoods. Be sure to research any expired, withdrawn, temporarily off the market and for sale by owners in the same area and certainly prioritize those homes. Those would be number one, two, and three on your list. And then you do the rest of the neighborhood. Now it's important that you're using our scripts and you're door knocking. You're not just basically door knocking and handing out flyers. That's not what we're telling you to do. We're telling you to door knock and you're going to get like, 
the way I, frankly, the way you should do it is you should have some flyers in your hand, obviously, and you should have, and we give you the outline for this on Premier Coaching, where you're going to say, um, you know, sellers wanted, and you're going to list out, um, uh, a, again, a description of the maybe top three buyers that you're working with. You know, family of four moving from Atlanta and, uh, you know, they're looking for a four bedroom, three and a half bath up to this price point, flexible closing, financing, all of this, just brief description. You don't include their names or anything like that. And then that's buyer one, buyer number two, buyer number three. And then you're going to go door knocking to the neighbors uh, in the, you know, the, in the community. And you're going to say, this is the list of buyers I'm looking for. And if they're not interested in selling, you need to say, you need to directly ask them if they know of any of their neighbors that are thinking about selling that, you know, frankly, might be a good fit for one of these potential buyers, right? You need to ask the question. Don't just give the flyer and then walk away. Your point, your goal is to have a conversation and connect with those people because what you'll soon discover is a lot of those people are going to be incredibly nice. And by the way, oftentimes gossipy as hell and oh, yeah. gossip. Yeah, and you want to hit the gossip of the neighborhood because they're gonna they're gonna know who's getting relocated, who's thinking of being a for sale by owner, who had their house in the market last year and expired, you know, who's getting divorced, who just inherited a house. Those are perfect. And you can ask them, well, who have you seen doing, uh, you know, garage sales, or who have you yep. heard? Ask them. So, you know, if, bird dogs, basically. exactly. And what you'll soon discover again, if you're actually doing the real work of real estate and having real conversations with real humans, you know, not digital is that people want to talk with you. People want to connect it's with you. People hard. want to help you. People want you to be enthusiastic about their neighborhood and the home in which they live. That's right. Now, let me take just a quick mindset step back because I want to make sure that these guys understand what we're doing here with the wanted flyer ads, social media, et cetera. You're all used to thinking about advertising a listing. That's not a hard concept. You know, you do your advertising, marketing, open houses, you push your listings. but And yet... You're all sitting on tons and tons of buyers. All we're doing with the wanted flyer is advertising your buyers. I just want to make sure that they have that concept, right? Well, the flyer at the end of the day is a prop to a conversation. Well, exactly. That's if, my if hidden motivation to getting them to talk right, about if we're it. Being, if we're being completely like, you guys got to see it for what it is. The flyer is just a prop to give you a little sense of confidence that will give the seller something Keep or the, on track. the owner to look at when you open the door so you can, you know, say the script that we give you guys to say in Premier Coaching. That's really it all. It's just a, it's a sales prop. See That's it for right. what it is. Okay. Point number three, post your wanted flyer to your social media with a call to action to message you back to see if your buyer is a match for their home. When you get messaged, call the person back with urgency. Remember, it may or may not be a match for your buyers. It's still a potential listing lead either way. That's the other concept we have to drive home is you can only find one house for one buyer. You're going to create listing leads from this. Right. So this is really important. I used the example of Matt earlier. So mm -hmm. he was he was working with a couple that were wanting to buy a house and he was looking at a price point and, uh, where the people that were wanting to, that he found that wanted to sell the house were then going to want to move up. Now, why am I pointing all this out? Because you're not going to get that kind of transaction flow if you're just focused on, say, for example, first-time buyers. You're just not. Um, you're going to want to work ideally in that middle price range because then you're going to get people that are moving up. You're going to get people that have equity. You're going to get people that probably have great credit. You're going to get people that probably aren't that interest rate sensitive, and you can start doing multiple transactions. What you've got to realize is that you, from one transaction, from one conversation, from one door knock, from one person you meet at an open house, that can result in immediately two or three deals, but over time, dozens and dozens of deals. You Because why? Centers of influence and past clients. Listen to yesterday's podcast. And a lot of the, the people you meet when you're door knocking, make sure it's just not a one and done. You got to make contact with them. Ask them for their information. Ask them if they'd like a CMA, if they're curious about what their home's value is in this market. Make it so that those people then know your name and you know their names. And guess what? You've now made a friend. That's right. So point number four, make a short video using the wanted theme for each buyer in your pipeline and send it to your database with a call to action to text, email, or call you with a house matching your buyer's needs. Also send this to your agent database as well, because most of the listing agents out there, some of you listening, have properties in their coming soon pipelines. Of course, the priority is to your own database, but when you've got buyers that are just chomping at the bit and they're not in contract because you just haven't found them anything, you've got to be a lot more proactive. That's right. Point number five, post your wanted flyer on nextdoor.com slash the name of the neighborhood. Most of you guys know what that is. It's nextdoor.com slash Albany Woods or whatever the neighborhood is your buyers are after. 
as well as any neighborhood Facebook pages, WhatsApp groups, et cetera. Case in point, one of our clients in Louisiana did this. She just basically posted that she did a good news, bad news post on nextdoor.com slash name of the neighborhood. Good news is I was able to sell one of your neighbor's homes in XYZ neighborhood in less than two weekends. The bad news is that we had 16 offers. That means there's 15 other people dying to live in this neighborhood. Who do you know? Hopefully she, not dying, but... Well, hopefully not dying. A little dramatic. It's the NyQuil. Yeah. Um, so she immediately got the next listing off of that from a simple nextdoor.com slash neighborhood name post. The good news, bad news, there's still people looking in the neighborhood. So let's seed this with a little bit added information. You're going to be pulling out a lot of times when you do this type of work future transactions. In other words, there's going to be people that were th that are going to sell sometime the next year or less. So you have to give them permission to self-identify when you're communicating with them. Because they're like, don't just make it all about urgency. Like I'm looking for somebody now, which you obviously would like to find, but you need to make sure you're giving them permission to, you know, make the conversation so that they are able to tell you comfortably that, you know what, I was going to put my house for sale next year. You know, maybe then, that would be a good thing. Yeah, not now, but stay in touch with me. Right. Oh, I would buy, or I'd rather, I'd sell my house, but I don't have a place to go. Well, Mr. Seller, uh, the buyers that I'm working with, they're actually very flexible. And I found in many cases that the seller is actually able to stay in the home for a long period of time after closing. Would that solve your problem? Or Mr. Seller, just so I can understand, if you were to find that you would love to sell your house, but you have to, you're looking for XYZ and ABC neighborhood. So in other words, if you were to find that house or what you're looking for, then you'd put this one for sale. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do for you exactly what I'm doing for the folks now that are probably going to want to buy your house. You tell me what you're looking for and I'm going to go find it for you. And again, you guys can see the transaction flow that can come from doing the real work of real estate. Mm -hmm. Wash, rinse, repeat. You can build incredible real estate businesses by doing this type of work. Well, this is the type of work that is driving the market right now, evidenced by the fact that all you guys complain about all day long, and I appreciate this because the stats are true in terms of lack of inventory, okay? Lack of inventory, nothing to sell, nothing to sell. They're in the drip system in the MLS. As soon as something pops up, we go and look at it, then we get outbid, okay? That's not working for you right now. So two things can be true at once. You can be banging your head into the wall. You can be on the hamster wheel of showing, 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 compete, lose out. And at the same time, we have this high volume of sales going on. All you have to do is look at your hot sheet and your MLS. Things are selling. Not all of them are flowing through the MLS. How is that happening? Because proactive agents are doing exactly what we're talking to you about on today's podcast. They're going from deal to deal, just like Matt. And, you know, we didn't even talk about, to, to go back to Matt's potential, at least five transactions. Three of those were listings. Actually, four of the five were listings, right? Think of the action that he will get from doing just listed, just sold, door knocking, open houses, lead follow-up off of four highly motivated seller listings, right? That's because he was proactive. That is how transactions are happening right now. Just because you don't see them in the MLS does not mean they are occurring. Remember, there will be between four and four and a half million sides this year. Many of them are happening this way because you guys who are proactive are making it happen. Now, point number six, which is frankly my favorite point, and it's not in the notes, but it's absolutely positively, frankly, one of the best ways to generate instant inventory for your buyers is going to be new construction. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to get to know... Look, a lot of you will message us after we talk about this because you're not doing the real work. Look, go into your Google machine and mm -hmm. research all the new construction that's for sale. If you're blessed with a bunch of national builders, well, then that's the easy button. But otherwise, if you're in like a, I mean, we work with a lot of people in LA and some of these areas where the new construction is being, right, it's not being done by the big builders, it's being done by mom and pops and, you know, you, that kind of thing, small, medium builders. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to be more creative by driving the neighborhoods. You're going to have to look for the houses that are obviously under construction, look for the houses where they, uh, you know, are starting to put up the notices that this is getting approved or that's the permit getting approved. Signs. The permit signs, the chain link fences, you know, those types of things. Look for the, like out in California, if they're doing any kind of, you know, addition, a second story addition, they have to flag the lot so the neighbors know their view is not going to be all that. Look for all of that, and then obviously, uh, you know, start talking to the neighbors, and you're going to define, you're going to quickly discover that new construction is an absolute cash cow because the new builders, and I'm going to, you know, go back and think about the big national builders, they're not putting their inventory in the MLS. They don't have to in a market like this. Nope. Uh, but what they are doing in many markets is they're offering more than a normal commission. They're offering better financing. 
They're, in other words, your buyer is going to be able to walk into a new construction site. They're going to find a new house, probably three or four houses to choose from. They're going to be able to uh, get the house using the builder's lender and the interest rate is going to be less. I think uh, Julie and I researched this last week and it was like, you can get a builder lender loan right now in the 4% range, you know, something like that. So you get the point. And it's most buyers are going to say, hell yeah, I'm going to buy a new construction house. My payment's less. It's about 33% of what is actively available to purchase on the market right now. And yet, I guarantee you, you log into your MLS, you're not seeing 30% of your MLS new construction. So you have to go find it. Drill down on what Julie just said. So if you're in a market where there's DR Horton or there's Dominion Homes. Lennar is huge. Lennar, right MI Homes, and all the rest of it. You're going to have, and there's billions of guys like this, right? You're going to have to, well, not billions, but probably like good 30 national Oceans builders. Of them. Yeah. Um, know where they're building. They're going to most likely be building outside of the, uh, you know, sort of the immediate uh, area that you're maybe focusing on real estate wise, or maybe your buyers are thinking about, but it's okay. Go out and take them out there anyway to see the homes that are for sale, meet the new build reps. We've done so many podcasts and so much training on how to work in the new construction arena from the, you know, uh, realtor end of things that it is an absolute untapped cash cow that is frankly going to be one of the best opportunities for the foreseeable future. Julie and I look for, um, we are listening to a podcast today by uh, Housing Wire, mm-hmm. w- which Julie is a contributor towards, or she writes articles for him all the time. And we're listening to your uh, economist crush. What's his name? <laughs> Logan Motoshami. Yeah, he's fantastic, by the way. And so we are ta- he was talking about all these interesting facts and statistics. And he was I, re- I loved how he was belaboring the fact that, who does he call them? The foreclosure, the housing crash bros. The housing crash bros, yeah. People who, who scream the sky is falling and there's all this hidden foreclosure inventory coming and there's going to be a crash and prices are going to come down and you're going to have up to your eyeballs in inventory. I love it when Not you so a- much. When you ask those people where their facts are from, they are always cite each other. Like, so they won't actually say a real reliable source. They'll say, yeah. I heard, I was told. Or they'll ghost you completely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you say, well, why is it that you, what, do, so when so-and-so who you deem to be an expert told you there's all this shadow inventory of homes that have yet to come for sale, you know, the banks or whatever the big conspiracy theory is, did you actually try to validate what that person said? Oh no, this person says something, it's gospel. Okay, got it. So basically what you're passing along is just malarkey in essence. Yeah. You know, so that's what we, that's the reason we like listening to Logan because he loves picking fights with these people that love to throw out these fake gurus out there. There, it, there's so many. That's because he can fact them to the mat. I mean, but it is funny. Yes, it is. Well, yeah. you do have to know your stuff. We've done podcasts about that too. Right. So what yeah. he is saying and what we're seeing is the same thing that we have been telling you guys for now going on three years. There is not really four years. There's not going to be a housing crash. There's not going to be any sort of radical price correction. There's the floor. This is not 2007. This is none of those things. It's just not going to happen. Well, let, let's drill down on that just for a second because that conversation will come up when you are at the door or at coffee with a prospect. Right. They will have read or heard or you know seen a headline that said prices are coming down or prices have stabilized, no more appreciation, something like that. Here is the one fact you have to, two facts that you have to keep in mind. Everybody is predicting 2023, because now we have enough data to look at it, should end around 4 to 5% home price increase. Whether you call that appreciation or inflation, prices are going up 4 to 5%. On average, some markets, obviously more, some markets less. Yes. Okay. But still positive. Now, for those of you who have experienced these crazy you know, price increases for the, next, for the last you know, three to five years and even 10 years, you're going to feel like the world's coming to an end. Only 5%. But keep this in mind. According to Case Schiller... Between 2020 and 2022, nationwide, the average home price increase was 45%. I want you to think about something you just said, though. I just put two thoughts together. See, the na- I'm telling you, man. It's because Celsius is winning today. The DayQuil increases my IQ points. You've got DayQuil on this shoulder and Celsius on the other shoulder, <laughs> and they're fighting. Maybe. All right. So you told me something last week that you yeah. actually studied, which I really enjoyed, too. You were saying... Uh, I think you also learned this from your economist crush, Logan. Mm -hmm. Julie loves it when I say that. (laughs) Uh, That the actual, no, this was from another source. The actual inflation rate, removing housing, was something like 13%. Who was that? I can't remember the name of the economist. It was an economist-based podcast. Okay, but so let's just hover there. that's right. So if we're saying right now the hypothetical average appreciation for this year is going to be something like 5%. uh, I I see where you're going. Yeah, because the cost to build a new home the material cost and all the, let's say, associated expenses with building a new home has gone up by, let's say, 13% in the last 12 months. 
what you're going to see is the cost of new construction is as out the, it cannot outpace the hypothetical appreciation of the resale homes. The cost of new construction, just what it costs to build a new house, if it's risen by 13% in the last 12 months, of course, that's going to drag up resale. This is the reason that real estate is isolated essentially from a lot of the other things that are going on in the economy um, in a good way and in a bad way. Your This question comes up a lot too, and it's interesting. I can, you know, low information people are always uh, answering this question negatively. And it's fascinating because they never have any factual information to back it up. And the question is, is now a great time to buy a house? Of course, now is a great time to buy a house. Who cares what the interest rate is? Yes, of course, you need to afford it because you can always refinance the interest rates. Are interest rates going to go down? They absolutely will go down when, Julie and I think the next 24 months, maybe the next 12 months or less. Mm -hmm. They can't really increase for all the reasons we've talked about on this podcast before. This is not your um, grandfather's inflation from the late 70s. Right. This is completely different. So what you're going to see is the cost of housing is going to increase. I just expressed to you guys, hopefully clearly, that new construction has gone up by 13, or 13 to 15%. You know, your $500,000 house in a year is going to cost $575,000 to build. That's going to pull up resale. So you're looking at uh, everything housing-wise. Remember, housing is not figured into the inflation rate. Isn't that funny, listeners? Housing is not figured into inflation. So when you hear the government talking about the inflation rate, they're not including the hypothetical inflation in rents or the hypothetical inflation in residential housing. It's not included. Now, I know there's a lot of doom and gloom happening around commercial. That's not our focus. Our focus is residential real estate. No doom and gloom in residential real estate. When you look at the simple cost, the simple fact that every house that you're thinking about leasing or buying in 12 months from now is going to be substantially more so much more in an actual dollar amount that that increase in value will probably more than cover your cost of owning the home, even if your interest rate today is 7%. Did I express that clearly? Yes. And meanwhile, your rent, should you choose to wait out the market and speculate that somehow magically prices are going to fall, which is not happening, then you will have thrown all that money away in rent and next year your rent payment's going to go up too. I've so never, I've never met a, any sense. have you ever met a renter that says they're thrilled that they stayed runners? Never. And in fact, uh, one of the other economist reports was showing, and I research this now and then to make sure it's still true. The difference in net worth between a renter and a homeowner is like 40 times. And I think it's something like the average renter has about $6,000 saved and the average homeowner, it's like 50 or 60 grand, whatever that works out to be. And that's, that's just averages. There is a true, undeniable, obvious to everyone bifurcation that is going to happen over in a very, I think, historical way over the in the next 12 to 24 months. It's going to be between the people that own home and don't. For sure. Because the people that don't are going to be priced out for a generation. Mm -hmm. Generation, let's call it 10 years. Well, illustrating that waiting doesn't pay. Exactly. So Literally. If, if, guys, look, buy, if you're in real estate, if you want to buy a home, you know, just do not look for an excuse not to buy. If your excuse is the interest rates, do yourself a favor and just accept the fact that rates will go down and you can refinance because it's going to continue to inflate. There's zero, again, your uh, podcast hosts here, your mm -hmm. future real estate coaches, your current real estate coaches, we told you guys at least two years ago that the inflation uh, that we are experiencing was not going to be short term. We knew it was going to last because Julie and I, all we have to do is you know look at the facts and the facts are too much money circulating is going to rise and cause prices to rise and, and that's going to happen into the foreseeable future. You think the government's all of a sudden going to start saying, well, we decided we're going to start you know trimming the budget. We're not going to spend as much money. That ain't going to happen. Well, so let me illustrate to your point about waiting is not a strategy. Okay. Coaching client Brad in Orlando, working with, you know, all of you guys can relate to this. A, I think they were first time buyers right around the 500,000 mark, which, you know, is kind of a, I think it was 450, 500 first time buyer type house keeps on getting, I think they were outbid six times. Okay. So they have an option. They could have rented instead. You know what he did? This was very crafty. I was very proud of him to do this and them for pulling the trigger on it. He actually started looking down market at a different product so they could invest in something for a year or two and then look again after they had realized the appreciation on that. I think that he sold them like a $275,000 townhome, so, which was acceptable for them to buy for now, run up some price, get some equity, and then either keep that as an investment property and buy in a couple of years 
or sell that cash out and then move up in a couple of he years. He was doing what was best for his clients. Absolutely. So, you know. so sometimes it's a little counterintuitive. How many of you listening would actually look a little bit down market instead of what you keep on getting outbid at a different product to solve the same problem? That's right. So listen, you can see why this market is about skills. It's about skills and frankly, focusing on being of service to other people, which by the way, the only way you're going to be of service to a lot of people is through the fact that you've earned the right to be because you can solve their problem because you have the skills. You guys see how this is always going back to knowing what to say, how to say it, knowing how to solve other people's problems. That's what coaching is all about. We've made it very easy for you to become a premier coaching client. So easy, in fact, that we've made it free. You can join premier coaching right now and get the first 30 days access to premier coaching for free. Did I mention it's free? Free. And that does include a daily semi-private coaching call with one of our Harris certified coaches. Every single day, you're going to be on a private Facebook page, private Facebook live page with one of our Harris certified coaches. And uh, yeah, and you can have all your questions answered and you can interact with a community of other like-minded real estate professionals that are successful because of this market. So it's very simple. Scroll to the description, click the premier coaching link and join. If you're even marginally uh, serious about being successful in real estate, why the heck wouldn't you join? We removed all the risk. Join premier coaching now. Just click the link in the show description. In the meantime, guys, thank you for continuing to keep this number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals. And thank you for putting up with Julie and I's slightly, uh, yes. what would you call it? Slightly off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Cold induced intoxicated uh, day, day quill content. Yes. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right, and don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're gonna love that one.